Hello Sparkmonds and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. And I post videos weekly, so please subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos. I also have worksheets available if you want to practice any content that's covered in any of my videos. Or if you want to practice the content that's covered in this video, you can find that worksheet in the description box below. So without further ado, Let's jump into this video where we'll be looking at stem and leaf plots and frequency tables. So let me teach you how to do tally tables and how to plot a stem and leaf plot. Okay, firstly, um, what's important for you to note is when we're dealing with tally tables and stem and leaf plots, it really is about recording data in such a way that it's easy for you to work with it. Okay, because sometimes when you're dealing with data handling, you are dealing with a lot of data, a lot of information. And so these methods or these plots just make it easy for you to actually see, um, you know, what data you're actually working with. So let's start with the tally table. So um, a nice way to explain this is actually just by showing you and doing an example with you. So a school camp recorded the ages of the students camping. The data is given below, right? So this was the collected data. Now data just means what is the information that we're going to be working with, right? And now they want us to take this and put it in a tally table, right? So the first thing that would make this easy for you is if you organize the data and put it in ascending order. Right? Once you have it in ascending order, then it's easy for you to actually see how many of each you actually have. Right? Because a tally table essentially counts how many of a specific value you actually have in a data set. So when you're working with headings, right, you have to have a heading that speaks to the data. Now, in this case, our example is age, so our heading will be age. When you're dealing with a data set, you would maybe be dealing with something else like um, shoe size or uh, marks for a test. No matter what you're dealing with, that that type of data is what you will have as a heading there. Okay? And then you'll always have your tally um, column. The tally column is where you'll make your strokes. And I'll tell you what I mean by that now. And then frequency means just how many of that do I have is a numerical value. Okay, so let's start off. We're going to look at the organized data because it just makes it easy for us to see. Right? Let's start with age 13. Now, if I look at this dot, I see that age 13 appears twice, so I will draw two strokes. Right? And then the frequency means the total number of that specific value, which is two. Okay? So you're going to be doing this then for each of the values. If I go to 14, you will see 14 appears 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So under the tally, I'll make 4 strokes. Right? And then frequency would then be the total number of uh, vertical lines that I have here. Okay. Then let's go to the next one. I've only got 1, 15. So I've only got 1 vertical line and only have 1 as the frequency. But when I look at 16 now, you see I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, six 16 year old, right? So whenever you are counting six, the fifth or more than five, the fifth stroke will always mark through the first four. So if you have a look here, you'll see this counts as one, two, three, four, and then the line that goes through it counts as five. So that when you look at the data set, you can see the five as a bundle. Okay, and then we'll count this. This is then a total, if I count the diagonal line as well, it gives me a total of 16. Then this is, then we have 17, okay, 17 has got 2, appears twice, and again, I've got 2 here. Now, when you add up your frequency table, this answer should be the total number of values you have in your data set. Okay, so when you add 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 6 plus 2, it should give you the total number that you have. Then you know you've actually didn't skip any particular number, okay. And that is essentially how you draw a tally table, which some teachers also call a frequency table. Okay, 
Now let's look at a stem and leaf plot. And again, reminder, the purpose of these plots is to make uh, a lot of data easy to identify and easy to be able to see what is actually happening in the data. Okay, so here it says now the ages of the passengers on a bus were collected and recorded. And so they've given you the organized data here at the bottom. Okay, now we have to draw a stem and leaf plot. Now the way you draw a stem and leaf plot is you think of it as if there was a stem and there are leaves on the stem, right? The stem is sort of, you know, if you think of it, the stem would be your main branch and your leaves will all come off from that, okay? Now, when you're dealing with a stem and leaf plot, your first values, value or values, depending on how big the number is, will always be your stem. And then the numbers next to the stem will always be considered your leaf. Now, let me show you what I mean. So, if I look at all my data sets here, do you see the first number in all of these range from 1, and then I've got a 2 in the front, and then I've got a 3 in the front, I've got a 4 in the front, and then I've got a 5 in the front. Right, so this will then be my stems, okay? Now, when I say in front, I mean the first value of all of these values, okay? Now, if I look at 13 and 15, both of them have a 1 in front of them, okay? So they will fall under the first set of leaves, right? So we've got... 3 and 5. So what this means is I've got 1 as my stem and I've got 3 and 5 as my leaf. But if I had to read this, it would be actually be 13 and 15. So we are placing the value that's first as the stem and the numbers after that as your leaves. So let's look at 2. Alright, so I've got a 3, a 4, a 4 and a 6. Now let's look at 3. I've got two values that start with a 3 and the numbers next to the 3 is 1 and 5. So that goes into the leaf column. Okay. Then I've got 46, 47, 47, 49. Again, that's four values. I've got 6, 2, 7, and a 9. 6, 2, 7, and a 9. So all of these are all the values next to 4. And then the last one, I've got 50, which means I only have a 0 here. Okay. So this is, again, how you create a stem and leaf plot. And this just gives you an easier way to sort of look at the data and see what is actually being given what data is actually being collected and what that data looks like okay and we also consider this as sort of organizing the data now what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to pause this video here and i would like you to try and draw a frequency table for this data set from 102 to 108 and then i'd like you to draw a stem and leaf plot for the bottom now remember in our first example the stem and leaf plots we had one number as our stem. In this case, as a little hint, it will be two. So pause this video now, and then when you're done, unpause it, and I'll let you know what the answers are. Okay, so hopefully you, you feel confident about your answers. So let's see what you were supposed to get here. Okay, so for the frequency table, right, it will look as follows. You'll have two, 102s, 103, 0, 104s, okay, could have also left this open, and then 105, 1, 106, 3, 107, we have 7 of them, and please remember, and make sure that you grouped the 5, and then 108, there was only 1. Okay, the stem and leaf plot for the second one, you then had 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 as your stems, and then the leaves would be 2, 5, 3, 0, 0, 2, 3, 5, 5, 6, and then 8, and then 0, 5, 6, and 0, which resembles the 150. And that is your lesson on frequency tables and stem and leaf plots. All right, so there's that video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please add it in the comment section below. And if you have any recommendations for any future videos, you can also add that in the comment section. In the description, you will also find a link to a worksheet that you can use to really practice the work that was covered in this video. Or if you want to have a look at what else I offer, you will find the link to my website in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys!